heat pumps. If you're thinking of buying and investing into a heat pump, or if you already own a heat pump and you've just got a really high bill, this video is gonna be for you. Today, you've joined me on site here in Poynton, Cheshire, where I'm gonna be going through this customer's heat pump, solar panel, and battery storage setup, and how they've managed to get their bills right to the bottom. Let's go. Quick disclaimer we don't install heat pumps and I've got no intention of doing so either. I'm just a tech nerd, I thoroughly enjoy the technology and I know very clearly how the two technologies bind together. So I'm gonna use this knowledge to help you. So there are a couple of different types of heat pumps. We can have an air to air heat pump, which is what I've got beside me. You can have a ground source heat pump as well. They work ever so slightly different. I like to just think of a heat pump a little bit like a fridge backwards. It, it works in a very similar way. It essentially gets a refrigerant, puts it under a huge amount of pressure. The pressure creates heat. The heat then goes via a heat exchanger that essentially then heats a hot water tank. That hot water then flows throughout your radiators. Ta-da, we've got a nice warm house. Fridge backwards. Uh, the client here has got a Valiant 7 kilowatt heat pump. It makes some slightly bigger versions. We've also got a Power Wall 3, coupled back alongside 20 solar panels. So 10 on this side and 10 on the opposite side of the bungalow. So we've used a solar skirt in this scenario. This is just to simply stop birds from getting underneath the solar panels. So you can use either a standard bird mesh. Slightly more expensive to do a solar skirt, but it just gives it that premium finish alongside uh, the rest of the kit that we've installed here. The government have high expectations and have set targets of 600,000 heat pumps to be installed by 2028. However, as it presently stands, we're only installing 100,000 each year. And the uptake of these heat pumps it seems to be a little bit slow. So I think there's a couple of fears um, for people that are thinking of adopting this technology. So first of all, the actual cost to purchase and the cost to run, the overall performance of the system and whether they're able to buy the right amount of energy into their home and the electricity demand and how that load shifts alongside the actual grid. So I'm gonna be breaking this all down in today's video. Firstly, when it looks at, when we look at cost, uh, there's a seven and a half thousand pound grant that's available towards the cost of a heat pump now. So you can actually get these installs for a couple of thousand pounds. Obviously, it depends on the individual system and setup, like it does with solar panels and battery storage. There's, there's a varying scale, but they're becoming a lot more commoditized, they're becoming a lot more accessible, and the heat pumps themselves are far more efficient. Now, this brings me on to the efficiency, and I think it's a really good point. So your gas unit price will, presently speaking, be about six pence. And one unit of gas normally equates to about one unit worth of heat. So if you think about it, a unit of heat will therefore be about 6p, something along those lines. Heat pumps, however, can turn one unit of electricity into about four or five units worth of heat. Now, the downside to that equation, of course, is the fact that electricity prices are higher and therefore, even when we kind of churn that through the actual mill itself, often that can work out to be a slightly higher bill than with gas. If you're cranking the heat pump up to work harder, that efficiency level can drop. Unlike a gas boiler that maintains a constant efficiency, heat pumps, when you push them to be able to work much, much harder, or if the temperature's lower, that efficiency rating, coefficient of performance, or COP rating, because you'll hear in heat pump information, drops when the temperature drops or if you push the heat pump to work harder and this is where that efficiency balance often gets misaligned with one another and the price starts skyrocketing the first thing we want to try and do is make our house as efficient as possible so i think that's things like making sure we've got at least 280 millimeters worth of loft insulation in the loft it's things like making sure we've got cavity wall insulation insulating underneath the floors windows are double glazed if not triple glazed if you can we want to try and essentially make it a bit like an insulated box around the house that we're trying to heat. By doing so, the heat pump doesn't have to work as hard and as long. So that's your heat loss aspect of things. So it means at the, at the outset, we don't have to use as much fuel to be able to power your home. So assuming we've sorted this, we now have the outstanding energy usage. And the trick to heat pumps is to run them nice and slow, often and regular. And this is where things like underfloor heating comes in and larger radiators, because we're able to, with a larger radiator, run much lower temperatures, which increases our COP rating. So therefore the actual heat pump's running more efficiently. So what we now know is, if we can input the price cheap enough and get the heat pump to work 
efficiently enough, then effectively we could lower the bill much lower than a gas bill. But how does that all work out? So I just want to be clear with this. Heat loss is not the same as fuel consumption. They're two very different things that both need to be well considered if you're thinking of going for a heat pump or if you've got a heat pump. Because when you're buying energy off the national grid at 26, 27, 28 pence per kilowatt hour, even if I've got a high efficiency rating, it works out to be more expensive than a gas boiler. And this is where solar panels and battery storage kick in. Clearly throughout the summer, we're gonna have plenty of renewable energy if we've got solar panels, and therefore April through to about October, early November time, we're in a position whereby the solar panels, if you've got a battery, will pretty much take care of the full heating cycle and electricity consumption of your home, providing you have enough solar panels and battery storage, of course. That kind of clears up the summer months, but the big bills always happen in the winter. This is where temperature drops, that coefficient of performance kind of starts worsening. So as you get colder, the heat pump has to work harder in order to be able to create the heat that's needed for your home. And that starts dropping out of kilter. My objective when I'm designing a system is effectively to try and get my energy price as low as possible. This is where the right spec of battery storage system comes in and batteries is really, really important. So the first thing to consider within battery storage is making sure that I have an inverter that's big enough to be able to meet simultaneous demands at the same time. Heat pumps, if you've got say a six kilowatt heat pump, it often won't run at six kilowatts unless it's cranked right up. It'll run at a couple of kilowatts in the background in terms of throughput. This isn't the amount of capacity I need within battery storage. This is the speed of demand from the inverter to be able to meet these loads at the same time. So if I've turned the kettle on, if I've turned my oven on and I'm cooking my tea and I want heat at the same time, if my inverter is not big enough, it can't scoop the demand out of the battery storage to be able to meet the demand of the home quick enough. At the same stage of the game, and this is where off-peak tariffs come in, if I've got a cheap rate, so something like Octopus Cozy, for example, where this is about 12 pence in the off-peak times, if you've got an inverter that's big enough, you can essentially scoop the energy up when it's cheap enough, store that in your battery storage, and then use that energy during peak times to be able to meet the demand of your heat pump. If I load my energy price in at 12 pence, and I manage to get, say, a cop of one to four, I'm in a position where one unit of electricity makes four units of heat. So that effectively means instead of paying a gas price of six pence for a unit of heat, I'm not paying 3p, so it's a lot lower. So this is where battery storage comes into consideration. I effectively do a proper calculation to work out how much battery storage I need to buy and purchase. A top trick in my opinion is to start out with slightly less battery storage than what you think you need, run it, and just make sure your battery storage is fully expandable. So buy an inverter that's normally slightly too big, undersize your battery storage, and then as you go along, we can always add to it. So something like the SIG Energy Sigen store is a great example of where, because we can add them on a modular basis, you don't have to commit at the outset to absolutely everything. This can often lower your upfront capital cost. Now, what the client found out, and they took my advice on this one, is they started out with one uh, battery module. They ran it for a little bit and kind of said, I'm just running a little bit short on some of the really cold days. I'm not making the most of that cheap tariff. I notice basically when I get the cheap tariff and when I'm in that almost like that perfect wave, manager bills drop. But on some of the colder days, some more of the winter days that we're getting into now, effectively we're just slightly running out. We could just do with a bit more capacity. That's where they went for an expansion pack alongside the Power Wall 3. So here we've got 27 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage and rock bottom bills. The heat pump works really efficiently because during the summer, we can rely upon the solar and battery storage, store it and export it out to the grid to get a credit. So it virtually wipes out the summer bills and essentially in the winter time, we're in a position whereby we can run off the actual battery storage itself by buying it in when it's really cheap because the inverter in the Power Wall 3 is big enough, make the most of these cheap windows, sucks the power in when it's cheap and then delivers it out to the home during the expensive periods so it avoids those peak rates. I'm gonna go and show you the Power Wall 3 ad expansion pack, but just before I do, if you're a bit more of a rural property, I've got a video up and coming on the channel where we're doing it around house backup and all the things you need to know. So don't forget to like and subscribe if that would be of interest to you. So in a Power Wall 3, we get an 11.04 kilowatt inverter. We get 13.5 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage. Now, the downside of an EV car charging rate with a heat pump is the fact that your time window is six hours at one period of time over the course of the evening. It's actually a rough peak rate. So we'd have to buy enough storage and eventually last the following 18 hours before we make it back round to our off peak rate again. 
Bear in mind, if you've got solar panels, you will almost always get a top up of solar during the day. So this is where it's not an exact science, but you will be able to estimate very closely and why I'd recommend kind of going undersized on your battery storage, then making a decision once you've got it installed in terms of what we're going to be adding in extra. Where I've got Octopus Cozy, I essentially have three time windows. I have one two hour time window and two three hour time windows. Something to note whenever you're picking an inverter or battery storage like the Power Wall 3 I've got next to me is its charge rate. So the Power Wall 3 has an 11.04 kilowatt inverter. We can meet multiple demands, as I mentioned earlier, simultaneously. So the heat pump demand, the kettle and the oven, but can only charge at five when you have one unit. So what this means is if I've got one Power Wall 3, I can charge for two hours during the two hour time window. I can only put 10 kilowatt hours worth of storage in my battery. So you might be thinking, well, I've got a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery. I could use that to be able to meet the demand. But because my Powerwall 3 can only buy it so quickly, this can potentially sometimes just factor into the equation. Where I have one of the three hour time windows, you can fill one of the units up. Now, when I buy an expansion pack, the charge rate increases. So it can now charge up to eight kilowatts, so eight kilowatt hours per hour. So if I've got a two hour time window, I can now put 16 kilowatt hours worth of storage in the battery. So this is where setup's important. So alongside that almost that charge rate that I mentioned a second ago, we need to look at setback temperature settings in your heat pump. So if you're not occupying your home, the trick to heat pumps is to have them consistently running. Unlike a gas boiler where you'll just set the temperature to seven degrees when you're not in the home, the trick with a heat pump is to just lower your temperature threshold slightly during your non-occupancy time or during high energy price times. Then when you get your off-peak rate, so this two, three hour windows and that one, two hour window, you're in a position whereby you wanna crank the temperature up slightly so your heat pump can work harder because essentially its fuel price is much cheaper. You can get a bit more heat in your home effectively during those periods of time your battery storage can charge and you're then in a position where during the peak windows, battery capacity can deplete into your home. You've got extra heat from the off peak so your heat pump doesn't have to work as hard. Cop rating increases during your peak window. And this is how essentially you get that fine balance between insulation, cop rating of heat pump and the solar panels and the battery storage. And that symbiotic relationship with one another is how ultimately we get the energy price to be much, much lower than the traditional gas price alongside it. So there's a few things to kind of think about within that equation. So every system, of course, is very different and every setup's different. I'm for Powerwall 3 in this occasion, but another great example of battery storage you could go for would be the SIG Energy Sige install. So they come in a few different inverter sizes. We can also parallel them, which means we can install multiple inverters on the same kit. So if you've got a particularly big heat pump, there's maybe a three phase system where the Powerwall 3 wouldn't be suitable, we could kit that alongside it. Something to note, we're talking about lots of big inverters, is your incoming supply often will be anywhere from 60 to 100 amps on your incoming supply. If you're thinking of having a heat pump, battery storage and EV car charging, we just wanna make sure we can actually bring that flow of electricity into your house fast enough during a winter period of time. Sometimes it's necessary to upgrade the supply from 60 to 100, or sometimes if it's a really big kit from a single phase to a three phase system. Got to be careful around standing charges when we do this. So the setup is really important. One thing, a great tip from a customer that I once heard is tariff flipping. So with Octopus, they don't penalize you on certain tariffs where you leave the tariff early. You normally have to stay on a tariff for a period of six months in time. But if you set a date in your diary, during the summer, what this customer did was move to an EV rate during the summer months. So where the rate was much lower at night. So 7p in that scenario, charge the EV up overnight, charge the battery storage up overnight, run the heat cycle for the heat pump for the hot water overnight as well. So it's all off peak, made the most of any energy exports out to the grid. So maximized credits on their bill. Then during the winter, they flipped to cozy. They have to charge their car a little bit off and on. But what that means is the heat pump cost is reduced. And what they do is just regularly charge the car a couple of times during the day, effectively, just to keep the battery storage topped up. So sometimes tariff flipping can be a great suggestion if you're looking to just trying to maximize. So the kit's working as it should do. We get maximum efficiency out of the heat pump, maximum efficiency out of solar panels and battery storage. But the big key factor here is choosing the right tariff is also a real important factor to play as part of this kit. 
think this brings me on quite nicely to warranties, both the warranties of a heat pump and the warranties of solar panels and battery storage. When you're looking at that initial capital outlay and you're kind of thinking of these things, it's not just looking at, right, well, what's the here and now cost? What does this look like in the fullness of time? Heat pumps themselves have very little maintenance, as are solar panels and battery storage. The Valiant heat pump we've got here comes with a seven year warranty. Your Powerwall 3 by Tesla Energy comes with a 10 year unlimited cycles warranty. The unlimited cycles is a really good thing to mention because if you're charging and discharging often three times a day, then this can put a lot of extra stress and strain on the battery storage. You want to make sure that the manufacturer has a good quality warranty that sits behind it and a good energy retention rate at the finish point. Solar panels as well, they come with a 30 year warranty that are on here. So 25 year product, 30 year performance warranty that's on the system. So it's really designed to stand the test of time. And the warranty on the heat pump is very similar to that as you would get with a standard gas boiler effectively. And I think as long as you're getting the right capital outlay, so it's not too capital intensive, actually with, if you're thinking of coupling it alongside this set of kit, um, then you're in a position whereby you could be quids in. Common misperception is around making sure the heat pump installer and the solar and battery storage company are the same business. What you'll actually find is solar panels and battery storage is installed by electricians like myself, whereas heat pumps is predominantly, it's almost like it's plumbing effectively. It's a completely different trade. The companies that install them both together are often marketing aggregate companies, so they're often not specialists. It's a real big myth that you have to get installed them at the same time, because your battery storage and your solar panels, it's effectively a big load in your home. It's the same as just having a hot tub outside as far as that we would be concerned. And it's about making sure we're meeting the demand of that load and making sure that the kit's capable of looking at cheapest energy prices, weather forecasting, combining that together to reduce the bill right to the ground. Making sure that you have the right installer that's specialist is actually, I think, more important. So I would actually say having those as two separate trades and having them as specialists that's accredited, registered, qualified, and in a position to be able to give you the right advice. I often get asked about noise. So have a listen to Powerwall 3. Deathly silent. At best, if it's working really hard, no louder than a fridge. Talking of fridges, Got our fridge backwards. I'm right next to it here. Hopefully it'll pick it up on the microphone. It's just like a little fan. It's absolutely nothing by way of noise. It's deathly quiet. The only thing to note is sometimes when it gets really frosty, they have like a frost protection setting on the heat pumps. So sometimes that can make a little bit of noise as it's looking to almost like run a defrost cycle. Um, other than that, they're pretty silent to be honest. So this video today came as a special request around heat pumps and how it integrates with solar panels and battery storage. I'm sure there's information out there that you're trying to gather that you simply just can't find. So if you've got one of these requests and just simply have a piece of information, you're thinking, I wish someone would do a video on this topic. I would love to hear about it. Feel free to drop that in the comments below and I'll be looking to make some custom content that's for you. Thank you so much for watching today.